Hi guys, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, you might have seen the other day I put up a uh, video demonstrating my PIR, Passive Infrared uh, Security System Alarm Module. It's a do-it-yourself kit. So uh, this is the fully built uh, module. This is the kit. And so this video is going to serve to show you how to assemble it from scratch and to test it. This is what comes with the kit. Two pin terminal block for power. 5 volt piezo buzzer, 3 pin header, D203S uh, PIR sensor, a Fresnel cap to filter out ambient light, monetary push switch, 78LO5 5 volt regulator, a ceramic 0 0.01 uh, microfarad ceramic cap, 4 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic caps, a LM324 uh, dip IC, a quad op amp, programmed PIC 10F. 222 microcontroller, a DIP8 socket, or rather 8-pin socket, two 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitors and one 47 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, and we've got some resistors. Uh, one 47K, two 68K, and three 10K. Forgot to mention that there is a 1 mega ohm resistor that's uh, included. I forgot to mention that. Now, resistors aren't polarized, so you can place them in either way. They are well labeled on the board. For instance, R6 is 1 mega ohm, 1M. Uh, R3 is 47K, 47K. R2 is 10K. R7 is 10K. R1 is 10K. R5 is 68K. R4 is 68K. It's uh, all labeled on the board. You can't, uh, so all you really need to do is if you can't read resistor color code, bring out your multimeter <coughs> and measure each each of the resistors. It'll come like this. Two singles, one set of double, 68K, three, 10K. So easy enough to do. Make sure that when you solder, you have strong solder joints and you're not shorting anything. Next, we'll do the capacitors. With our resistors in place, we can now solder our capacitors. First of all, let's concentrate on our 0.1 microfarad electrolytic capacitors. They're labeled 104 and they're slightly bigger than the 103. The 103 or the capacitor labeled 103 is uh, 0 0.01 uh, micro. Now that goes in C6 and it's labeled 0.01U. So place the 103 capacitor in the 0.01U uh, footprint C6. Now again, the 0.01U is the 103 resistor. All of the 104 resistors, 0 0.1 micro, are placed in the other uh, capacitor slots. Uh, C2, 0.1U, C5, 0.1U, C9, 0.1U, and C10, 0.1U. U again is a, is a term for micro. So since those ceramic capacitors are not polarized, you can place them in either way. There's no polarity you're good. Just make sure your solder joints are strong. Take your time. Don't make any shorts. Now we've got three electrolytic capacitors. C3 is labeled 100U from 100 micro. C7 is labeled 47U for 47 micro. And C8 is labeled 100U for 100 micro. For each of these capacitors, or the footprints rather, there is a plus sign on the side with the where the positive lead is supposed to go. You'll notice that the electrolytics have a long lead and a short lead. Long lead is, lead is positive, short lead is negative. So in the case of C3, the little plus sign, which you probably can't see, is on the right-hand side. So you'd want to place your long lead in the, the right hole here. In the case of C7, the positive sign is on the upper side of the footprint from this perspective. You can see it just barely, but again, in this video, you might have trouble seeing it. Remember, that plus sign is where you're supposed to place your long lead. In the C8 slot, the 100 micro, the plus sign is also on the top here. You can't see it in the video, but it's just above this hole right here. So, so again, plus sign equals positive lead equals long lead. Your short lead goes in the opposite. So solder those into place. Take, very, take care in your electrolytics, make them flush to the board, good solder joints. Make sure that you don't reverse polarities or else your circuit might not work very well. And you might blow up your capacitors depending on which one. So just something to consider. Take your time. Larger step this time. Got a piezo buzzer. It's got a short lead and a long lead. Long lead is placed on the inside. Short lead placed on the outside. 
very, very important. Don't turn that around or else your pizza will not work. So when you place it, it won't go flush down to the board, but it'll. Uh, what you want to do is push it through enough so that the there are leads showing from the other side, but make sure it's level with the board but not flush because you'll damage it if you try to push it down uh, all the way down to the board. Make sure that there, it's about, uh, that the, there's about two to three millimeters of space between the bottom of the piezo and the board. Solder into place, should be good. Trim off the excess lead. You got a three pin header here. Easy. Place it in from the top. Short leads facing into the holes. Solder from the bottom. That's uh, an optional interface with another circuit with an output. The, uh, monet the monetary push switch really only fits in one way. In the S1 slot, you can pop it down. It should pop into place. Make sure it's flush with the board when you solder into place. The Two pin terminal block. There's a side with two terminals on it, a side with just plastic. Make sure that the plastic side faces this capacitor and that the screw terminals face outwards on the board. If you turn that around and you solder it with the screw terminals facing inwards, you're not going to be able to easily wire in your power lines. Uh, lastly, our 78L05. Uh, 78L05 has a flat side and a curved side of the footprint. The uh, flat side has the writing on it. The footprint right here labeled IC37805 has a flat side of the footprint and a curved side of the footprint. Make sure that from a bird's eye view when you're placing it that the flat side of the 78805 matches the flat side of the footprint and that the curved side of the component faces the curved side of the of the footprint. Don't reverse it or else your circuit will not work. That acts to bring your 7 to 12 volts input down to 5 volts to protect the microcontroller which we'll talk about in a minute. Solder those all into place. Take your time. Next, we'll do the uh, socket and the uh, LM324. Uh, Starting to take shape, and we're just about done. Your LM324 op amp has a notch on the left hand side. The um, footprint for the LM324 has a notch on the left hand side as well. Make sure that from a bird's eye view when you place it in that you match the notches up. If you turn it around, your circuit will not work and you will fry your LM324. Same goes with the socket and the microcontroller. The PIC 10F222 footprint, 8 pin, has a notch on the left hand side. There's a notch on the socket on the left hand side and there's a notch on the IC on the left hand side. From a bird's eye view, make sure that when you solder the socket in, the notch is on the left hand side and that the notches basically all line up. That's very important. That's an indicator of the orientation of which way you should be placing your chips. So when you're soldering, uh, to pay close, close, close attention first to placing your uh, LM324 in. Make sure it's flush to the board. Solder each pin carefully, making sure that there's no shorts. Making very, be very, very sure that there are no shorts. Same with the socket. When you put the socket in, make sure that you solder flush to the board and that there's no shorts. Then when you're done uh, soldering the socket in, Again, paying close attention to having to the orientation of the notch, place your uh, dip microcontroller into the socket. And lastly, we'll do the PIR sensor and the Fresnel cap. I've saved the best for last. The PIR sensor on the footprint, there is a notch right here. And there's also a little ring around this lead. Now, if you look from the bottom, there is a thick black, or not a thick lead, but it, there's a black indicator on it. Now, I don't want you to actually pay attention to that, but that, from a bird's eye view, that'll actually f meet up with this specific hole. Now, what you want to do is straighten out the leads, and you, what you'll notice on the actual PIR sensors, there's a little notch on one side. From a bird's eye view, match this notch to the notch right here on the footprint. You might not be able to see it from here, but if you purchase the kit, you want to make sure that you match that notch up from a bird's eye view and that the window is obviously facing up. So when you place that in and solder, solder, in the, you know, solder the leads, the three leads, what you'll do is you'll place this Fresnel cap right over top of it. It should fit right on, and that'll help filter out ambient light signals. So let's solder that up, and then we'll power it up. We're all done. On the footprint for the terminal block, there's two... Uh, two indicators on the left V plus on the bottom here uh, ground GND V plus can be 7 to 12 volts and GND is ground so I've got my positive signal and my negative signal so what I'm going to do is I'm going to power it on and I'm going to press the 
cell button, the selection button. As soon as I do that, a countdown will happen, and then we'll hear a single beep after uh, after the device is ready. Now, what happens is, is since the PIR sensor uh, output is it's amplified, it's swingy because what it does is it, it's getting used to when I'm not moving, it gets used to its new field of view, and then when I move, it picks up that. Uh, difference in its field of view, uh, it picks up that change in the infrared in the infrared spectrum, and the output starts to swing. Now the the microprocessor sets it so that it accepts a certain voltage window, and if it exceeds that voltage window, positive or negative, then the alarm will sound. After the alarm sounds, it will go through a calibration state again, where it waits for the output to settle again, about 10 seconds. We'll hear another beep and then I'll start scanning again. The beep is an indicator that it starts to scan. So anyway, what I'll do is I'll power it on and I'm going to run away. So, and then I'm going to come over once it beeps and I'm going to set it off. Okay, I'm coming over. So that's the alarm, and now it's resetting, so it'll go off again because I'm standing right in front of it. Uh, it's got a pretty good view, uh, about a meter. It's not adjustable, it's set this way, it's meant for indoor applications, not out. I'm gonna, If I had kids, I'd put it on my liquor cabinet, I'm going to turn it off because, as you can see right now, I'm going to turn it off, because I'm going to keep setting it off from right here. Uh, if I had kids, I'd put it on my liquor cabinet just to mess with them. Uh, uh, if I didn't want someone in my, in, coming in a room... I would uh, put it. I would put it in a room. You can hook it up to a nine volt battery. It lasts hours and hours. And uh, but you can also have a wall transformer if you want. Really fun to put together. Uh, really easy. A fun little security system you can make at home. Great for a science project. Great for minor security purposes. You can use it to monitor your animal. It should be able to detect your animal as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. The schematic is available at electroniclessons.com and engineeringshot.com. So have a look through our store. Tons of awesome electronics kits. And voice recognition is coming. It should be d d finished design by the end of the week and available within about a month. Thanks for watching, everyone.